we're going to be making uh, an English classic. We're going to roast some beef and we're going to make some Yorkshire puddings. So I come from Yorkshire, a town called Barnsley, and Yorkshire puddings are a, a, a staple of the diet, especially on a Sunday. You would have a, a, a joint of, of uh, roast meat, uh, traditionally beef, but it could be pork, could be a roast chicken, could be a leg of lamb. And you would always have Yorkshire puddings. Some people have the Yorkshire puddings as a starter. Some people have them with the main meal. Uh, I, I, we generally have them with the, with the main meal. So you would have uh, Yorkshire puddings, roast beef, and things like uh, roast potatoes. But today I'm going to be making uh, Parmesan coated parsnips. So uh, we've got uh, a few things to get through. So the first thing we need to do is get the, the beef into the oven. And what we're going to do with the beef, we're going to coat it in a mixture of flour and mustard powder and that gives the fat of the, the outside of the beef a, a nice crispy uh, texture and also adds some flavour for the gravy that we're going to make with the juices that come off it. So we've got some mustard powder, some all-purpose flour, a little bit of salt and pepper, we're just going to mix that together and then we're just going to coat all the surfaces of the of the beef. As I said, this is a prime rib, there's just one bone in there, weighs about three pound. I've got a temperature probe in and I'm gonna cook it to an internal temperature of, of 160 degrees, which is medium, and then when we leave that to rest, that'll be, uh, that'll be perfect. So yeah, so we need to coat this uh, and then it goes in the oven and the, the onion is just gonna go in there with it to roast with it. Okay, so we've chopped and peeled this onion Put that into the roasting pan. We've also got the flour and the, um, the the mustard powder on there, and we've got our temperature probe in. This has this beef has been allowed to come up to temperature before up to room temperature before we put it in the oven. If you put it in cold, all, all that it does is it takes it longer to cook, and what you end up doing is cooking the outside and the inside is a little bit colder. And plus, if the if the meat is cold, when you put it into a a, a hot oven. Yeah, the, the muscle sort of contracts and it can become a little bit tough. So always get it out of the, uh, the fridge for uh, a couple of hours before you put it into the oven and then it'll just help it to, uh, to cook more evenly and uh, retain more of its moisture and, and stay in a relaxed, um, tender state. So this is going to go into an oven at 350 Fahrenheit, which is 180 uh, centigrade. And generally you work, if you've not got a temperature probe, you want to be looking at 20 minutes per pound plus 20 minutes. So this is around about three pounds. So we're looking around about an hour and 20 for this, but I'm gonna use the probe and let that uh, decide. Well, if you do use a probe, make sure that you get the probe actually in the center of the meat, uh, not just the, the tip. So you measure it first and then make sure you get the probe into the, to the the actual center part of the joint, otherwise you're not going to get a true reading. For the Yorkshire puddings you need plain flour or all-purpose flour, an egg, a mixture of milk and water, this is 50% milk, 50% water, and a, some salt and pepper, and some method of either measuring it or weighing it out. So I'm going, to, I'm going to use my scales to weigh this out. And I'm going to work in grams, but I'm going to put it up on the screen what it will be in ounces. So you want 80, uh, sorry, 70 grams of flour. So that's around about two, two tablespoons of flour. then need 80 millilitres of milk water mixture. I'm just going to tear that off. And then one egg. Pinch of 
salt. Then you simply mix that together. Okay, so what I'm doing today, I'm actually, uh, I know I, uh, some people are watching from the UK and some people are watching from the US. So this is a batch of Yorkshire puddings I'm going to be making with some English flour that I bought online. I had to have it shipped in uh, from a, it's a, 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 it's a UK site. It's based in the UK, but it just ship over to the, to the US. And this is a, an all purpose or a plain flour that's readily available in the US. So I made these mixtures exactly the same. So I, I weighed all the ingredients out the same and I just want to show you the difference that you get between the two flours. So if, if you look out, look at the consistency of this, I would call that thick cream. Yeah. But if you look at the American version, it's thicker. So it's going to need some more liquid because we need, we need if you put that in the oven, it's going to rise like a cake rather than like a, a batter mix. So I'm just going to put a little bit more in just to show you what sort of consistency you want. I'll probably add an, another 10 millilitres there. And that's more like it. So certainly for the American flour, we need it to add a little bit more. I'm probably just going to put another splash in there. You don't have to whisk these too much, just make sure it's all combined. I think they're, they're about the same. So we're going to see how both of them perform in the oven. I'm going to use a, a tray and I'm going to have a, two, of the, two of the puddings are going to be the English mix and two are going to be the American mix and we'll see if, we'll see if they turn out the same. It took about uh, an hour and a half as, as predicted and the uh, the beef is done. So what you do after that is you need to get your tray for your puddings. Now you can make it in a, a, a tray similar to this. You can make it in one big tray or you can make it even in like a, a tray that you would use for, for muffins. Whoa, let's stop right there. I skipped over that a little bit too fast. The tin you use is actually quite important. This is a traditional Yorkshire pudding tin and you can see how shallow it is. Now you can use a muffin tin or a cake pan, but don't overfill it. About three quarters of an inch is good. If you fill a deep pan, the puddings don't have chance to rise. A traditional Yorkshire pudding tin is shallow, so you can't overfill it. In the US, they are available online. Uh, but the, the, the thing you've got to do is you've got to put a little bit of fat in there. So I'm using lard, as I always do. You can use uh, vegetable oil. Which, whichever is your preference but you've got to put a little bit of fat in there and then we've got to turn the oven up so that's going to go up to 425 Fahrenheit I will put the equivalent on the screen for cell, uh, centigrade I don't know it off, uh, off the top of my head but you've got to make sure that this pan is hot you've got to make sure that the, the oven is hot before you put your puddings in so this is going to go in the oven I'm going to turn the oven up to 425 and I'm going to leave that once it's a temperature, at least 10 minutes. Okay, so I have my two Yorkshire pudding mixers, which, which we made earlier. This is the one with the UK flour. This is the one with the uh, American flour. So these have been made about an hour and a half, as long as the meat was, was in the oven, and they've just been sat on the side. So some people like to put them in the, in the fridge, uh, so the batter mixture is, is chilled. I prefer not to do that. Um, so this is just personal preference so you don't need to put them in the fridge these are, are at room temperature so I'm going to get my hot tray out of the oven and then I'm going to pour two with the American and two with the UK mixture and we'll see see if there's any difference so I'll put this side the UK one. 
So you need to cook the puddings until they're golden brown like this. They should be crispy on the edges and the sides but still soft in the bottom. Now they don't need to be soggy in the bottom though, they should be cooked all the way through. Smaller tins will require less time, larger cake pans will require a little bit longer. Either way, do not open that oven door to take a look until at least 10 minutes have passed, otherwise you could end up sinking. So as you can see, the puddings made with the English flour have risen a little bit better than the ones with the American flour. I think that's due to the protein content. I think it's higher in American flour, so uh, they, uh, the puddings don't rise quite as well. Either way, I can confirm that they both tasted fantastic. So it's worth making, even if you can't get hold of any English flour. I am going to look at getting hold of some cake flour, which is supposedly got less protein content, so should help. So I will do an update as and when that happens.